spaghetti my god uh, spaghetti you know the usual spaghetti and and uh, meat sauce all over the, the spaghetti noodles which is why to this day I very rarely uh, eat any of this stuff okay uh, no offense mom you, thank you for everything you did but we're turning back the clock to uh, right around 1994 and uh, mom you know like I said this is a thing you know mom, we very rarely eat out mom's needs a you know, uh, you know, mom needs a dish uh, to feed the family. You gotta do it on a tight budget. And, uh, you know, so let's give my mom, let's give Mama Magnum a win. So, uh, so all of the boys can eat and there'll be still plenty to stretch for at least a couple of days, all right? So let's get underway now that you've got context to work with. 
All right, folks. One of the first things that we're going to be using right out of the gate is a big giant pot. You know, again, we're talking a big, big family, okay? Uh, we're talking a lot, you know, a good sized family. So, first things first, let's get some heat going to this particular pot uh, because we're going to be using one large Vidalia onion, which I've already chopped up nice and fine. Along with that, four cloves of garlic. And then uh, we're probably uh, going to be uh, just throwing in our stew meat, which ironically enough, uh, back then you could get this and it was really dirt cheap back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of folks out there who are going to recognize this, all right, you know, using something like that. Now, really quick, while we're waiting for the pot to kind of heat up a little bit, I want to take a moment and thank... Uh, the YouTube channel Townsend's for the inspiration to what we're going to be making. I seen something that they evidently made back in the uh, 1700s. I was like, you know, I bet you we can modernize that quite a bit and it'd make one fine dish. So that's exactly what we're doing in this particular um, in this particular episode. So, all right, first things first, let's breach containment. Don't worry, the meat's not from 1994. <laughs> I don't want that in there. It's going to be right around three pounds of stew meat. Um, All right, so now that we've got our stew meat in, uh, one of the first things that we're gonna do is we're gonna brown this meat, all right? And then as it browns, we're gonna throw in the garlic and everything else, along with uh, some uh, a little bit of flour. More on that later, all right? In the meantime, uh, we're gonna full time in space as we brown the meat. All right, everything's slowly kind of getting, you're still going to see a little bit of this, so don't rush the process a little bit, but you want to brown everything as much as possible. And uh, here in just a moment though, despite all of this, uh, we're going to go ahead and add in this, if you haven't done so already, you might want to add in just a little bit of salt. Don't get crazy, okay? Don't get crazy. Uh, if you were to twist my arm, I'd say about a teaspoon of salt, all right? Um, because there's still going to be a little bit in your in some of our other ingredients, uh, mainly, you know, in our beef broth, okay? But more on that later. Let's go ahead and add in our chopped garlic. It's definitely a time to add in our garlic get it going real good and then give that a quick stir make sure everything's distributed around and now we're going to add in our Vidalia onion and then we're going to lightly start browning that now okay uh, it seems like an awful lot but remember we're feeding an entire family of uh, of about six people right now. So um, we're trying to get as many ingredients in there as possible. That's also gonna be cheap, all right? There we go. All right, we're gonna cook this down just a little bit more. I'd say, well, I really can't give you a time. You're just gonna have to watch it. So don't wander off. Alrighty. 
I'm pretty happy with where we're at. So now I'm going to do something kind of unusual, but bear with me a second. I'm going to just add in not even, uh, a, I would say about an eighth of a cup of just regular all-purpose flour. Don't get crazy here, all right? It doesn't take that much. Flour, when it gelatinizes in hot liquid, will thicken up fast. So think of any of the juices and fats that have come off of meats and anything else will make kind of like a thickened roux in this particular case. So it won't take that much. Once we start adding in all the other stuff, it'll be just fine. All right, we're gonna let this cook down just a little bit more and then we're gonna add in the rest of the ingredients. All right, folks, I'm pretty satisfied where we're at. So one can of Golden Hominy goes into the pot. Be sure to try to get as much in there as possible. And a can of White Hominy, brand, doesn't matter. There we go. And all the ingredients you see right here would have been easily obtainable back in the 1990s and at an affordable price. Um, Low sodium would be the best choice for this, uh, but I'm going to add in two cartons of, eh, I might not need the second one. We can put it in there, ain't going to hurt nothing, because this is still going to reduce down. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do the second one, go ahead and do the second one, all right. Number two. Now, this is not going to be a soup, but this is going to be a stew. All right. So this is going to be long and low for a few hours. Don't get in a hurry. Okay. This is definitely a time if you've got something that you need to do. You're just going to turn it on low. Shoot. Some people could even do this in a slow cooker, or unless you actually have the real brand of crock pot, you could do that too. So, now that we've got this filled all the way to the top, well, almost all the way to the top, this is going to be pretty doggone awesome. However, um, just, this just by itself is going to be pretty bland. So, this is about time. We're going to add in a little bit of uh, dried parsley. Dried parsley, again, something that anybody could have gotten back in the 90s. Even fresh would have been fine. A single just single teaspoon nothing crazy nothing fancy all right let's do one of my favorites uh, some ground cumin one uh, let's do two teaspoons of ground cumin okay two teaspoons ground cumin gonna be great great flavor there and of course the all-important one of my personal favorites uh, we're definitely gonna need some black pepper now back in the 90s we were still using the stuff that came in the can and definitely wouldn't have had something like this on hand and of course uh, myself personally I like uh, my black pepper fresh ground so uh, back in 1994 we were still using it in the, the pepper shaker Alrighty, so now we've got this all together, uh, this nice stew, very easy to use, uh, you know, very simple recipe, doesn't get very difficult from here. I'm definitely going to add in just a little bit more black pepper because uh, I want to... Spices, spices like, you know, like this uh, would have been easy to get your hands on back in, back then. Now, uh, I've turned the heat down dramatically and again as I started to mention this is going to be a stewing process so I want this to reduce down slowly 
So I'm going to back the heat, uh, the heat off to just medium on the cooktop. <coughs> However, it works for you. <coughs> so you definitely want to keep this at a simmer for an hour to two hours. Depends on the meat, you know, if it's super tough, whatever. Or it depends on your cooktop or it depends on your flavor. So I'd like to give you an exact time but I can't. So again, keep an eye on it every now and again. Make sure that it, do, uh, that it doesn't, you know, that all of your liquids don't drain down before you're, it's, the, you know, the stew is where you want it to be. All right. So I'll see all of you in just a bit. All righty, folks, you could tell that this has reduced down quite a bit. And, uh, it's still a little too soupy for my liking, um, but I don't feel comfortable just letting it keep going. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, kind of preserve what I've got going on here. I'm gonna add just a touch more flour. Now, if you if you like it a little bit more soupier than this, that is completely up to you. Know, if you like it soupy, that's fine. Uh, completely and totally up to you. Uh, you can add more flour. You know, remember this is you guys' dish, not mine. I don't tell you how to, you know, this is, there's no right or wrong way to do this, okay? There's no right or wrong way to do this. You just find what works for you. All righty. I think once we get the uh, flour stirred in, and when you go to add, if you go to add any more additional flour, make sure that you um, don't just dump it on there like that. Otherwise, you get a lot of floury lumps, and that is not what you're going for. You'll begin to notice that it'll actually kind of thicken up just a bit, just a bit. And even if you get a few little floury lumps in there that's not a terribly big deal a lot of times if you crank it up it'll cook out pretty easily but if you did that in one great big giant lump in the middle yeah forget it you done messed it up <laughs> turn up the heat and kind of thicken that up just a bit that's about as far as I'm willing to let it go so now I'm going to kill the heat and let residual do the rest now because of the amount of flour that I just added there at the tail end uh, which again wasn't a whole lot I think all total I've maybe used about a quarter of a cup as this cools off a little bit this will thicken up a great deal uh, funny that's the funny thing about it all right let's grab some bowls and let's serve this up Alrighty, folks. Uh, a few light stirs here and there. Uh, because this being an electric stove, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of heat here. And, it's, and just because you turn the heat off doesn't mean that it's still not cooking. If you want the cooking process to stop at this point, take it off the burner. Uh, do also understand that there's going to be that leftover residual. Uh, we're carryover, I guess you could say, uh, which that's a more technical term for in this case. Uh, now, myself personally, uh, again, when you make a dish like this, uh, yeah, I've gave you you know kind of a list of ingredients, but you could have easily swapped out the hominy for any number of things. Uh, you could have used a can of uh, you know a couple cans of mixed vegetables, which I have done. And it turns out amazing that way. Uh, you could add it in uh, chopped carrots and saute those with the onions. You could have went with the the usual, um, you know, uh, mirepoix, which mirepoix is carrots, onions, and celery. You could easily have done that. Um, you know, things like that. You guys get the general idea. This is supposed to be kind of a cheap, easy to make stew that'll last you a few weeks. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's 
go ahead and dish this up. Um, this, I've had to smell this the entire episode. And remember, this is based on you know some stuff that I've you know that I experienced when when I was a uh, you know when I was a teenager. You know, not a whole lot in the way of uh, of money. You know, because mom just did not have a whole lot, you know, mom was working all the time and her other, you know, her supposed other half, uh, you know, he didn't work. So, something like this would have easily been something that my mom might have made and it would have lasted us, uh, it would lasted us a few days, you know. absolutely amazing um, served with some crackers or uh, with some bread and I mean my goodness um, simple easy to make dish um, and because of all the uh, all the different ingredients in it um, you know a lot of flavor and it's gonna be filling so now here we, you know, here we are. We've turned back the way back machine all the way to 1994, when I was 14 years old, and now my mom has a victory for the family. Okay, um, so there you have it. You know, some different things that uh, that I've learned along the way. Uh, of course, now that you know we're done turning back the way back machine, let's go ahead and stay up to current events. If you enjoyed this episode. Please be sure to hit the like button and be sure to hit the subscription button. And when you are just hitting the, that subscription button for the very first time, be sure to turn on notifications so you'll be notified every time you get one of these awesome videos. Uh, again, uh, the Prince Magnum channel is funded through folks like you, uh, through Patreon. Uh, for $1 a month, all proceeds go back into the channel and gives you unlimited access to Cinnamon's Discord. Along with that, along with all of that, uh, if you'd like some merchandise, we do have a Teespring store. Uh, there's tons and tons and tons of uh, merchandise to choose from over on the Teespring store. We're going to try to add a little bit more because uh, as making this video, uh, there's been a few of you that have asked for a couple of things along the way. Uh, so that covers that, covers that, covers that. Uh, I'm going to try to remember since this was uh, this uh, stew was inspired by uh, a historic channel called Townsend's. I'm going to try to link uh, the um, the video where I got this idea and how I brought it up to modern standards. So uh, so you guys will have some context to work with where I got you know my idea for this uh, for this stew. Along with that. Uh, that brings us to the usual stopping point, which is get out there and work on a project. I don't care what it is, just do something with yourself. Remember, idle hands and a creative mind go together like oil and water. If you have a sweetheart, sweep them off their feet and do something special for them today. And as always, for every last one of you out there, if no one out there has told you that they love you today, Prince Magnum does. God bless you and have a happy 24. Thank you.